I am ready to rock. Oh, I don't hear it. I am ready to rock. Okay, so let's go. Everything you heard was processed by JavaScript and actually web audio stuff. So before I go in deep how to make it, I just introduce myself. So my name is Vitaly. I'm Ukrainian who lives and working in Poland, nice city called Wroclaw. I work in for a company called Epam Systems. I'm co-organizing Angular Wroclaw meetups here. And yeah, I have a hobby to play a guitar time to time and to relax. You can follow me on Twitter. This is my handle and my personal blog. So, web audio. What is that? How we can use it? Actually, web audio is a unidirected graph that contains audio nodes. So, what is actually unidirected graph? It's a bunch of dots connected with some directed arrows. Basically, we have some input or source of our sound, and we have an output. Between source and output, we have some nodes that's going to add some effects, process our audio, uh, our audio analyze it, whatever. And we have the same for guitar stack. We have an input, our instrument, and we have output, speakers, or some stack of speakers. And between those, we have some effects. Amplifiers, cabinets, distortions, overdrives, all this stuff. So first of all, how we can connect our guitar to web audio? To do that, we need, first of all, create an audio context. So we create in our audio context, and it's the main point where we are operating audio graph. Then we request the media using navigator media devices. And if we want to use only audio, we request audio. That's easy, yeah? But it won't be that easy. So wait for a moment. To use an instrument as a stream, as I said, we request audio through getting user media. But to clean up our sound, we need to use some constraints. Because by default, browsers apply an echo cancellation, uh, noise suspension auto gain control and some latency to our input. So to have the clean input, we need to use those constraints. And as the last step, we create a media stream source. That's the stream that uh, goes through our input to audio card. And then we connect in our source with context destinations that our speakers or and other destinations that we can choose in our system. So when we connect something, we want to control the volume, how loud it is. How to do so? We have a special node, gain node. And we can imagine our sound wave as a sign. And if we divide it by 2 or multiply by uh, 0 0.5, we will get the smaller sine wave. And the amplitude of this sine wave actually means our volume, how loud our sound. So to reduce sound, we need to divide by two. To increase sound, we need to multiply by some number. So how it looks in code? We create our gain node 
using constructor or factory method on context. And after that, we can apply value. We use gain node, gain, value, and setup. Uh, zero will mean our sound will be muted. One is it's normal. And if it's higher than one, it will be louder than uh, original input. Next, we need to build this graph. So we have our source. Then we connect it to gain node to control volume and connect gain to destination. So let's try it, how it looks like. Okay. Let's do that. Not, it's not visible. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, Okay. Oh, that's better. And Okay. Now it's better. So yeah, I have an application and I have connected source, yeah, and we got this clean sound. I have a volume control, so I can make it not that loud. So yeah, it was the basic stuff. Actually, this melody I wrote myself some time ago. So, okay. The first effect I want to show is distortion. So you can't imagine any rock music without distortion sound. And basically, what is distortion? It's a group of effects that shape in our input sound with some function. So what is this group of effects? We have a few of them, overdrive, distortion, and foos. And all of them still called foos. I want to tell a story how it was invented. So, uh, in the past, the amplifiers wasn't that uh, good as they are now, and they were broken sometime. So, if speaker was broken, it starts to produce disordered uh, sound. So, some people started to dist uh, destroy the amplifiers themselves to get this sound before it was done by some transitions and so on. Now you don't need to do that. You can just use web audio for that. Yeah, don't destroy speakers. So, how it looks like? Again, we have an input that's actually a, a sine wave, yes? And we apply some function to it to make it more square. So this more square sound gives our, our sound to be disordered. For example, we can apply that function that is here. But what's the difference between overdrive, distortion, and foos? So the difference is how smooth is that curve. Overdrive is uh, usually something uh, lamp based, so it's more smooth curve. Distortions have some more harder one. And foos basically sounds like something additional. It's almost flat sine wave. So to shape our input in way we want it, we can use wave shaper node. We can create in and apply a curve. And curve is a floating 32-bit array containing numbers that will be applied by web audio and reshape our uh, sound. So we're creating some array, we loop through it, and apply our function. Then that function will be rebased on our input.
to achieve the desired sound. Also, we want to control tone or even create some equalization for our effect. To create simple tone control, we can use BigWatt filter node with type of low pass. Low pass BigWatt filter means that everything, everything that goes down to some particular frequency will be cut off from our sound. So controlling this frequency of this filter from uh, lower 350 till highest, we control it if our sound will be higher or lower. Let's try it. So I have a bunch of distortions here. So now we have a clean sound. Yeah, and let's try some overdrive. some tone, we can make it darker and lighter. This kind of classic overdrive. Let's make something crunchy. to some distortion, more heavy sounds. Okay, I have something more heavy. It's quite noisy, but it sounds like something metal. That sounds really nice, but it still sounds digitally. So to make it more realistic, we need to simulate cabinets or amplifiers. So to uh, simulate amplifiers, we can use something called impulse response. So it's a short sample, really just a second or even less, that captures the impulse response from some real device. Imagine this impulse response like a photograph of the sound. So, like photograph is uh, uh, taking a snapshot of some light at some moment. The same with impulse response. We have a snapshot of something in real life. So, how to apply it in web audio? 
we can use special node, convolver node. And it's actually really awesome because that node hides a lot of complexity. Uh, it gets this impulse response for you and applies it via fast Fourier transformations. So all heavy work was done for you by Convolver node. So you just fetch an, an impulse response, then uh, converting it to array buffer. Then this array buffer needs to be decoded by audio context and applied as a buffer for Convolver. Also, usually amplifiers has equalization, at least three-band equalizer. So we also want to do it. So what is actually three-band equalizer? We have bus. It's everything that goes behind 500. We have middle that takes from 500 till 3,000. Uh, and treble that takes everything higher than 3,000 gerts. And we have special nodes for that in web audio. We can, again, use BigFat filter node, but different types of filters now. So we're using low shelf. What does it mean? It takes everything that is above the frequency and cut it off. Picking, it takes the uh, nearest range from the provided frequency and amplifies it. High shelf, it takes everything that uh, above some frequency and amplifies it and cut off everything below this frequency. Let's try it. OK. So I have, it's the first, it's also kind of crunchy amplifier. We can turn it off, it's clean sound. And we can turn it on. So it sounds more realistic. And we can apply different impulse responses to get different kind of amplifiers simulated. Let's try to use equalizer. Let's cut off all middle frequencies. Or increase them with treble. Set it right now and try distortion without amplifier first. Let's apply our uh, convolver node right now. sound more realistic. Yeah, and the last thing. Usually when some company doing sound recording, they applied effect called revibration to add some volume to the recording. So basically we usually 
to hear some sounds more realistic, we imagine it in some space, in a room or hall or something else. So how to do it is web audio. It's more complicated effect to implement. So basically, we want to split our input into few, two channels. First one will be clean channel, un untouched completely. We will mix it with uh, the modified stream, uh, merging it again at the end. And on the second stream, we want to slightly delay our sound to uh, express the time that g gets for the sound to go to the walls and come back to you. So it's trying to uh, do the same thing that in real world. Then we apply some uh, tone control with BigQuad filter and apply special impulse response. You can not only have impulse responses for amplifiers, you can have it for some spaces like rooms or concert halls, uh, halls or theaters. So then we get in this chain and merging it back to one stream. And we can switch how many uh, untouched sounds we want and how many of modified we want. So doing that, we mixing it out and uh, achieving more realistic sound. Let's try it. OK, so now we have revibrated sound. It. Okay. And we can increase delay to emulate response from some space. Let's try some hole. Okay, and if you combine everything together, we can achieve some like leading guitar sound. Ready for solos. try to listen for it without vibration, it sounds without volume, like flat scene. Let's try something more heavier.
can do something like that. Before we creating all these nodes for reverberation, we create channel splitter first, then we creating delay node, we creating tone node with big fat filter, we creating convolver and gain node for increasing uh, make up our convolver afterwards. Then we create another gain node that will be used in parallel for dry sound. And we create a merger to merge everything back. Then we need to actually build this graph. So we connect in everything chain by chain, splitter with delay, delay with tone, tone with convolver, convolver with wet, and to merger. And in parallel, we connect in dry gain node. We connect in splitter to it, and then a dry node to merger. And that's how I achieve it. So, short recap, what I showed today. So, I showed, first of all, how to connect your stream source to destination, how to control volume using game node, how to create distortion effects using wave shaper node, and big watt filter for tone control. I showed how to emulate cabinets with convolver node and how to implement reverberation using channel merger and splitter, delay nodes, big watt filters, and uh, making everything up. So just try it at home. Uh, every, all the code available on GitHub, application is deployed on GitHub pages as well. Try it and rock it. Thank you for listening. Thank <laughs> you.